Captain and Tangela too. And our host, Vincent Van Dahl. And he brings it to you! Period of civil war. Rebel spaceships striking from a hidden base have won their first victory against the evil Galactic Empire. During the battle, rebel spies managed to steal secret plans for the Empire's ultimate weapon, the Death Star. That is not the Star Wars theme. Of course it isn't. It is Gustav Holtz, Mars the Bringer of War, which seemed to be the inspiration for many of the themes John Williams used in Star Wars. Legal said Disney would sue our trousers off if I use the actual movie theme. But Gustav Holtz would not sue us because he is dead and couldn't give to... Shall we then proceed with the introduction? Indeed. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent Van Dahl. With me is my dutifully dedicated major domo of Polter Mansion, the musically observant intruder of introductory diatribes, the dashing Mr. Livingston. And over to this side, cradling a bundle of dynamite that, in the spirit of safety, has not yet been wired for detonation, is the delicate and dainty lady of the manor, the lovely Miss Tangella. And have we a fantastical show from a galaxy far, far away in store for you. First up, we'll be joined by Steve Sansweet, owner and operator of Rancho Obi-Wan, the largest Star Wars collection in the world. He'll tell us all about his amazing facility, give us the story of its origin, and maybe even bring an item or two from the collection. Oh, and we'll also show you footage from a Tangella guided tour of Rancho Obi-Wan. You won't want to miss that. Movie-wise, we shall present a remarkable turdling of a film tonight. Star Odyssey from 1979. Originally titled Sete Yo Mini Dior Nello Spazio, this translates from Italian to Seven Gold Men from Space. That alone should tell you everything you need to know about this film. But for those of you still not entirely sure, it is a quite rather bad attempt to mimic and ride on the mighty coattails of George Lucas's greatest film. If you haven't yet seen it, we have no doubt you'll be most amused. If you have seen it prior, apologies in advance for foisting this cinematic lump of coal upon you yet again. Did I miss anything? I believe you've said it all. Good. So don't go away, because it shall be another night of intergalactic fright, right here on Creature Beachers! Stay tuned. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. This brief moment of tranquility has been brought to you by Nightscape. Relax and sleep better every single night with this and other videos from our free YouTube channel. Learn more by visiting nightscape.co today. Welcome to Creature Features. It's Saturday night. 
And yeah, we've got we've got quite a good. You know, he gave up his Saturday night. You normally go to the disco on Saturday night. Absolutely, you know? the Star Wars disco. You know, I, that's the one thing I don't like about doing a show on Saturday night is we ruin all the disco dancing in the area. But uh, he gave it up tonight because we've got uh, Steve Sansweet from Rancho Obi Wan. I wanted to ask you about how you came up with that name in a bit, but uh, it's a, it's it's a huge collection. It's a it's a museum. It's like the Sp Smithsonian. Of Star Wars, right? It is indeed. We've got like 350,000 to 400,000 items in the My collection. My goodness. Guinness World Record. You must have a computer database that uses a very large hard drive to keep track of indeed. all this. My goodness. But you probably remember them all. You probably remember everything. I right? remember a lot visually. There's some things that still trick me and right. I buy duplicates of, oh, or no. I insist, oh, I don't have that. I have to buy it on eBay. And somebody oh, my says, goodness. check first. Right, right. That's a smart move. Anyways, he's got the greatest collection of Star Wars stuff in the world, both um, things that other people can buy and things that nobody has seen or known about before, like props. We, we took a visit there on, uh, was it Sunday? And we took Tangela and she did a little video came out wonderful you have to stay till the end of the show though to see it because uh that's that's gonna be fun you can see the inside of the place and everything but uh we're gonna talk to steve about uh his wonderful facility and we're gonna watch this film star odyssey and you haven't seen it either i have not no you know so i've seen this film only in pieces and all you have to do is see a tiny piece to know you don't want to see the rest it's that bad it is no no i would not lie so why it. are you wearing it uh, you know, the reason why we're running it is because it is the only movie in our library which was anything related to Star Wars. There were a lot of similar movies that came right. out in that time period. Yes. Which had the word star or had posters that had Star Wars ships like the Millennium Falcon in them. Riding the coattails of George Lucas. Indeed. That's terrible. Well, we're going to talk about some of those, but uh, let's get this film started. When we come back, I want to hear the entire origin story of your wonderful facility. Okay. All right, off we go to Star Odyssey 1979. Uh, if you don't stay for the movie, at least stay for the guests. happening on our perimeter. An unidentified spaceship has penetrated our defenses. Flanagan, Meyer. What's going on? This is Unit P of Reconnaissance, reporting the sighting of an alien vessel, a flying saucer. They're maintaining full radio silence. They don't reply to any of our signals. The velocity of their ship is much superior to my craft. I'm sending Johnson out after it and a new hunter. That's the best we can do, sir. Let's just hope he manages to catch it. You can it. try to force it to land, but if they won't, he should return to his launching module. It's possible their intentions are hostile. An indigenous space vehicle of a primitive, chemically propelled design is attempting to force us to reduce velocity. Destroy it. 
Insert central computer link into defense system circuits. Hurry. Link inserted. Base Hunter A-74 Beta struck and disintegrated by a destructive ray impossible to identify. Alien vessel has passed outer belt perimeter defenses and is now rapidly approaching automatic inner defense ring of Earth. Propellant energy source not yet identified. Automatic system on emergency in-tracking and aiming phase. Alien vessel now entering K sector 5. In 10 seconds, it will be in range of atomic cannon. Man meets an alien race at last and greets them by disintegrating their vessel. Atomic cannon crossfire now underway. The object has been struck. Commander Barr. Quiet, Hollywood. You are witnessing mankind's first contact with an alien race. Yes. And I'm ready to shake their hands. Alien vessel on damage. What? And proceeding rapidly, direction Earth. Atomic cannons ineffectual. Impossible. This is red emergency all sectors. Zeta-3 ready to open up. At that velocity, they're already beyond section Zeta-3. And they'll be drawing within range of our hyper radar any minute now. And the Earth-based artillery. Approaching SOP-3. Atmosphere rich in oxygen. Breathable with little discomfort. Widespread traces of pollution due to chemical combustion and nuclear waste. Analysis of magnetic and heat radiation reveals technological level approximately equivalent to the Aztec culture 18 centuries ago. Bionic radiation analysis reveals planet population to be approximately 10 billion units. Infrared scanners show that almost all industrial and residential structures are below ground or on the seabed. This appears to be due to the necessity of freeing the surface for agricultural use. There are in addition vast areas of both land and sea dedicated to breeding and raising lower forms of life to serve as nutriment for the higher forms. So three is even better than I thought it was when I bought it. Seems they want to show a force. It would be extremely impolite of me to disappoint them. destroy all our military bases. After they knocked out London, they started on Accra. There are no survivors at Adelaide. And Tokyo Sub says the Okinawa base is just a junkyard. The laboratories have nearly finished examining all the available data, but the news has leaked out. I can't hold off the reporters much longer. In spite of the lack of official information, the papers are already talking about an invasion. It'll take a miracle to save us now. If anyone can work miracles, Professor Mori can. Professor Mori? Who's he? Mori is a truly exceptional scientist. He has a degree of intelligence that puts him about two centuries ahead of everyone else. Why isn't he working with us? Because he's too independent, stubborn, and undisciplined. He won't accept any kind of authority. But in a situation like this, he's the only person who can do anything. Why not get in touch with him? The problem is that my relationship with the professor could not be described as ideal. The last time I asked for his help, he was so difficult to get along with, I had to arrest him. He can't have liked that. Quite. At the moment, the only person he might listen to is a young Lieutenant Oliver Carrera. Ah, Hollywood. That fellow who acts as if he were a superstar in a TV series called Fighting Hero of the Galaxy. Him, the only one who could possibly help. Holly spends most of his spare time in the professors. As a young niece, he's playing up to. Hmm. Professor Morey lives at the ecology laboratory on the cereal range and passes the time turning out inventions that are incredible. Flanagan, I can't hold these reporters back anymore. Don't worry. I'll take care of that howling mob. You have to go on a very important mission. Indeed. 
Mysterium. The alien craft is protected with an armor of pure Interium. That's impossible. What makes it impossible, dear? Just because we on Earth only have a kilo of Interium? But we know nothing about conditions prevailing on the alien's galaxy. Earth has a lot of iron, and their planet might be made of Interium. But, Uncle, Interium is practically indestructible. And their spaceship is proven. Our nuclear artillery didn't even scratch the surface. Evidently, the enemy craft has traveled from a far corner of the universe over a vast distance in order to arrive here. It's not surprising they managed to swat down that ridiculous insect of a space hunter that the command post sent to greet them. Oh, Uncle, you really shouldn't laugh like that. Our planet may be in very serious danger. Oh, I'm not laughing about it at all, Irene. My dear, these aliens have several centuries' advantage over us. They travel out of space, through the galaxies, while we are unable to get any farther than the planets of our own sun. They possess an untold quantity of Indirium. And in all probability, consider us savages. Hardly worth bothering about. Technologically, they may be ahead of us, but I think that... Just a minute. I'm sorry. They're barbarians. They don't place any sort of value on human life. But you're forgetting how the white man behaved towards the Negro. And the American Indian is the most powerful race which makes the decision as to who's civilized and who's not. And I'm afraid we'll have to accept our inferiority and submit to the inevitable. Interior. I never would have imagined that I'd have to go back to my research on Indirium. Good evening. Oh, Holly, at last. My name is Oliver, in case you forgot. Uh, no, darling. Please excuse me. I mustn't be informal. This visit is official. Since the visiting hero is so anxious to maintain his formality, I suppose there's no use offering him a drink. Good Lord. What's that? It's an old house robot that Uncle built ages ago. It had a short circuit in its electronic brain and it acts a little peculiar. Why don't you fix it, Uncle? Well, I could never find the time. Anyway, I've forgotten how it works. <laughs> he may not speak very distinctly, but he's a superb bartender. Professor Morey, we're faced with disaster. Three of our bases are already in ruins, and we, we're completely helpless. No doubt you've heard the latest news bulletin. According to the official news, the situation is under control. What do you want with me? Commander Barr has entrusted me with the most oh, important mission. Oh, I know, mission. I know that. You already said your visit was official. So I can easily imagine what kind of heroic mission Commander Barr has entrusted you with. To persuade that old fool, Maury. To help him out. I must say your Commander Barr certainly has a nerve. After putting my uncle in prison, he still thinks he's entitled to ask his help. Yes. But the whole point of the matter is that there's no way I can avoid giving you the assistance you need since I have to live on this earth myself, as does my charming niece. I'll, I'll do what I can. can. But on my, my conditions, conditions only. No conditions, Maury. I'm not authorized to agree to conditions of any type. You can do whatever you want, but don't expect any support officially. If anyone gets burned, I'd rather the anyone was you, naturally. I don't hesitate to admit preferring your discomfort to my own. You've had a taste of it already, Bar. It was an unavoidable necessity, and you know it. Now. All you have to do is to tell me if you're going to help us, or if we'll have to surrender. Hmm. That means he'll help us. Holly's done a good job. I don't know how he manages, but he does. I burn my fingers, and he warms his hands. I don't understand. Was there some kind of trouble between you and the commander? Oh, it's a long story. I'll tell you one of these days. It also concerns a couple of friends of mine, Sean and Bridget. 
among the greatest chemists living. Why haven't you ever mentioned her being friends of yours? I believe they're in the penitentiary at Moonspace. Quite. Now, somebody will have to get them out of the penitentiary, and I know just the person to do it. Maybe, uh, don't look at me, sir. I'd have to get an authorization, and I don't think Commander Barr I would... I must have them. At Base GA, they've managed to discover that the alien vessel is made entirely of enderium. That's supposed to be a secret. Are you surprised that I know? Frankly, I'm astonished that the base managed to discover it, too. And only Sean and Bridget could possibly succeed in inventing an entirely new substance that could perforate enderium, but the two of them are in the penitentiary. Apparently, it's a vicious circle. It's impossible to get out of it. Not necessarily. Say a certain lieutenant were to join forces with a person I know who's very clever with locked doors. The two of you could free them easily. But an act such as that is strictly against the law. Assisting criminals to get out? No, never. That would mean betraying my duty as a soldier. And that you can't expect of an honest man. No, no. And I can't force you. What I expect is that you would volunteer to handle it. But that's ridiculous. You must be joking. I, I couldn't possibly... Of course I'll do it. Professor, I volunteered to handle it. You've done it again. It's very unfair of you. <laughs> I must have shown it Bridget. And Dirk and Norman. And as for them, you'll have to track them down for me, won't you? I don't know what to make of this. I mean, we, we should have just spent the money and bought Star Wars, right? <laughs> no, that's a, that's a movie we should be showing tonight. It's Star Wars, not not this. So uh, there's an evil man in the galaxy, and he's uh, he's attacking Earth, and they they sent Hollywood, a bloke named Hollywood. Makes go, sense to me. I would never send a bloke named Hollywood to save the Earth. That would be ridiculous. No, you, you send actual warriors, not like party goers. Anyways, uh, welcome back to the show. We are watching Star Odyssey, blah, blah, blah. But we are joined by Steve Sansweet, and he's got the largest Star Wars collection in the, in the universe, right? In the galaxy. No, I think in the entire universe. Which is bigger, the galaxy or the, the, universe, the universe? is all You're galaxies. Right. You're right. Many galaxies. So in, in a galaxy far, far away, and even in this galaxy, he has the largest Star Wars collection. So I, I must ask, how did you get into all this? Well, I grew up being a collector. Baseball cards when I was right. a kid, comic books, bottle caps, Dixie cup lids of ice cream, right. movie stars. I bet your mother loved that. No, she, yeah. said, she would always say, who does this right. junk? right. Well, she used a different word. Right. Um, so I saw Star Wars. Before I saw Star Wars, I started collecting Japanese space toys, robots and rocket ships, because I loved science fiction and right. fantasy growing up. Right. Read a lot of books. Star Wars came out. I saw it on the back lot of 20th Century Fox 10 days before it opened because I was a journalist in Los Angeles working for the Wall Street Journal and got blown away. And I walked up to the guy who took my... my uh, advanced ticket and said, could I have that? So I got something for my collection. Right. still have it. That was the beginning of your collection. Well, there was actually the one, one item that was before that, a promotional brochure that they sent to movie theaters right. and to journalists to try to get them to book Star Wars. I remember Wars. this. This was a nice slick thing that they yes. put out, right? Lots of color photos right. and descriptions of the characters. And it came to the reporter at the Wall Street Journal office in L.A. who covered the movie business. He looked at it. He threw it away. When he left for the day, I tiptoed over to the trash right. can 
and that was my first dumpster diving for Star Wars, but not the last. I remember those. You know, I, I, I received one of those from a friend, and he said, oh, my friend at the press gave it to me. And, you know, what, what, what's something like that worth today? A lot of money, right? That original it's press. Several hundred dollars at least. At least, right. And that's amazing. So that was the beginning, but... You still did many things before, and then you went to work for George. I got a call from Lucasfilm. I had started writing books. I wrote my first book in 1991. It came out called Star Wars from Concept to Screen to Collectible, about how Star Wars went from an idea in George's mind to how they did it on screen to the merchandise, which I'm a firm believer really has helped Star Wars become the phenomenon Absolutely. that it's become. Right. So... Um, I got a call from Lucasfilm saying, do you know anybody who would take a one-year-only job going out and talking to fans and letting them know about the Star Wars special editions, which were coming out in 1997? George right. messed around with the Star Wars movies and was re-releasing them right. on the big screen. And I said, let's talk. And I left my job after 26 years at the Wall Street Journal and went to Lucasfilm for a guaranteed one-year-only job and they just forgot to fire me for 15 years. 15 years, right, of course. So I became head of fan relations and it was a wonderful job oh meeting fans goodness. all over the world. Right, so you would go to like conventions and things conventions, like that? Conventions, in that first summer they, uh, they expected me to do eight to 10 conventions and I did about 40 My through goodness. the fall. 40 conventions yeah. a year. We had some great clips to show and talked about the special editions and it was a blast. That's incredible. Well, I want to hear more about your life at Lucasfilm, but I'm going to say that we've got to get back to the movie, Star Odyssey. What do you think is going to happen next? Something good? Maybe Hollywood can get... That would be nice. That would be nice. But then we'd have to like talk the rest of the night because the oh, movie would okay. be over. So I, I suppose that won't happen. Stick around. We will be back soon with Mr. Steve Sansweet after Star Odyssey. See you on the other side of the break. change sooner or later. Pay up. Come on. I'm afraid you really were very unlucky. The law of probability was certainly on your side. <laughs> oh, Dirk. I just don't understand it. I had all the winning numbers, but she won. Huh. Very lucky girl. Uh, you know, I never thought I was going to win, Laramie. Dirk huh? Laramie, you brought me luck. Hey, listen, you. Can't you see I'm busy? You're Dirk Laramie, aren't you? The gambler who hypnotizes his opponents. Look, I'm busy. Let's talk about it later. Hey, boy. This is Dirk Laramie, the guy who can see through cards. I think he ought to give back the money he won off us. That's him. Hey there. Just a moment, darling. You gonna hand over that cash to us? Here. Oh! <laughs> 
that you were here, too, huh? I'll bet you were hitting me harder than the others. <laughs> no, I'm afraid I didn't have that pleasure. But I did enjoy the performance. Tonight at the usual place. <laughs> she won't keep the appointment. A couple of guardians caught her just as she was trying to slip quietly away, unfortunately. <laughs> what are you doing here? Oh, I certainly didn't drop in to say hello. It was my uncle who asked me to look for you. And I'm afraid there was no way I could refuse. He wants to have a talk with you immediately. It's urgent. Oh, he does. He wants to see me. Look. He said for you to come right over to his place without wasting a moment. <laughs> does he think I'm going to come running every time he snaps his fingers? Like that little toy soldier of yours? Don't be like that. This thing is very important. Oh. I'm sure it's extremely important. What a shame. You've gotten worse, Irene. You used to kiss a lot better. It's the fall of that soldier. Holly. Dirk, how many days have you been in here? Oh, two, three, I don't know. Then you know nothing about what's happening in the world. Why? What's happening? <laughs> they assassinated another president? Why not come and see? Mm-hmm. I guess I should. Won't you sit down? Uh, Jeeves? He's asking you if you like ice and soda in your whiskey. <laughs> no, thank you. I prefer it neat. I take it Irene has already told you everything. Not exactly. I began explaining one or two things. Apparently, it was more important to find some guy called Norman. If you want me to go to the penitentiary at Moon Space, I must have a spacecraft. Yes. Fortunately, it happens that there is a junior officer here on the station who's an old friend of ours, Oliver Carrera, <laughs> known as Hollywood. Oh. And is he willing to help out? Mm. I've already awakened his interest in the operation. All you have to do is prevent him from changing his mind. With your unusual talent, I'm sure you will have no difficulty gaining his cooperation in borrowing one of the Navy's vessels for our use. Do you follow me? Hmm? I sure do. It's just like old times. <laughs> and when your mission is finished, and you've returned the spacecraft to the base, Oliver won't remember anything. Always assuming that we managed to get away with Sean and Bridget. Oh, you'll make it all right. <laughs> I have every confidence. I know you, Dirk. You know, Professor, I miss you. <laughs> Turn one into one on the slave pickup operation in the subtropical continent. Yes, sir. 1,600 dark skinned units of various age groups have been collected. All damaged or physically unsuitable elements have been destroyed, leaving a sample group of 1,000 strong, healthy individuals. This group has had two hours in Zeta chamber to destroy all pathogenic bacteria. They are now undergoing suspended animation processing prior to stowage in hold six 
container four. Hey, Holly. I am Lieutenant Oliver J. Carrera. You see the star? It's a medal for galactic bravery. Oh, I trust the lieutenant will accept my apologies. My name is Dirk Gordon Laramie III. Dirk Laramie? I think we've already met. Oh, <laughs> you have a very good memory. <laughs> Listen, Holly. Oh, I'm sorry. I have something important to tell you. It's from the professor. How did you manage to get in? Civilians aren't allowed on the base. Uh, better get out. No, wait. Just a minute, Lieutenant. Till you've heard my message. It's from uh, the old man, get it? He sent me. What old man? Ah. You don't remember? Professor Maury. Maury? What does he want from me? He said for you to help me, so they'd lend us something. Lend? Lend what? A spaceship. I just need it for a day or two, and when we've finished using it, you can give it back. Huh? You're the only person that can help us. And Professor Morey said he was certain you could do it. You're out of your minds. Both of you. I'm handing you over to the guard. No, wait a minute, Lieutenant. Don't do anything you might live to regret. Think of Irene. Irene? Yes, Irene. I have to think of my duty. Duty comes before anything else. That's right. Duty first. And stealing is against my principles as a soldier. No one can force me to. No one wants to force you. I'm waiting for you to volunteer. Of course. Of course. If it's what the professor wants, I'll gladly volunteer. Come on. Follow me. Urgent mission. I must lift off at once. Present your permit. And has this civilian with you got a base pass? Of course he has. Show him your pass. All right. <laughs> Let's go. Galactic hero. Who's that idiot blasting off without flight clearance? I don't know. There aren't any scheduled flights today. Where to? Moon space. The Alcatraz of the heavens. There are two birds in that gilded cage that we have to set free. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to the show. We are watching Star Odyssey with Mr. Steve Sansweet, who has stepped away and been replaced by this one 
But, you know, we do this every week because she's very, you know, I understand she's been asking nicely now. Oh, that's good. No, in the old days, she would stab the guest with a knife. Well, she'd prod them. No, she would poke them very hard with a pointy object. So uh, she asked him nicely if she could take over for one segment, and uh, here we are. So we're going to do some mail because we got all kinds of mail, did we not? We did. Well, let's, let's start with one. From, from Jennifer Stein. Jennifer Stein. How are you, Mr. Livingston? I'm well, thank you. How You're are you? Well? How'd you like that introduction with the music and all that? That was rather confusing. Yeah, he's, he's actually quite musically inclined. He just does not uh, act like he is. All right, Jennifer Stein says, oh, this is, I, I suppose, to Tangela. So you're going to have to talk tonight and answer some questions. Uh, we just watched the host segments from The Gorilla. When did we do that? was a while ago, was it not? Long time ago. Uh, Tangela was cute and adorable with them. In many ways, she reminds me of myself as a teenager. I bet we'd be great friends. My high school chemistry teacher was a pyrotechnic who gladly blew things up for our entertainment. It was a terrific way to end a school day. I ended up liking chemistry and making up chemistry puns. My fantasy pet is a three-headed black cat named Isotope. Each part would be named after the three isotopes of carbon, C10, C12, and C14. I have no idea what she's talking about. Do you? I'll talk to you about it later. Well, you know, I fail chemistry. Yes, indeed. Well, no, but I was a musical prodigy. Yes. So, you know, the power goes to one place or another, and I did not get in chemistry. All right, here's a question. Do you have any pets? She has an entire menagerie. No, was it last week we had your... Little Too pooch many. out here. The dog was here last Fang. Time. Yeah, he's a nice little dog, but sometimes he poops in the wrong place. Uh, she goes, uh, my hobbies are movies, games, and music. Do you have any hobbies? She collects dead things. That's what she does. And, you know, I, I think she takes them without permission. Yeah, this is true. No, yeah, there's, a, there's a graveyard. There's a graveyard. She cannot go to the graveyard. She's banned from the graveyard. There's an actual sign that says, Tangela not allowed. Yeah, and she it's ignores true. it. She ignores it. Uh, so that's a hobby. It's one of many. Uh, thank you for writing, Jennifer. You know, when they email us, they never tell us where they're from. Yeah, when they write in the post, we have to see the postmark so right. we know. So if you're going to email us, friends at home, tell us where you're from, because it's nice to talk about hometowns, right? Yes. It is. All right, next up, Mr. Livingston. This is from Portland, Oregon, David Montgomery. Portland, Oregon, David Montgomery. I wonder if he's any relation to Elizabeth. Elizabeth Montgomery. Elizabeth Montgomery. Yeah, she's dead, you know. Quite. We're going to be showing an Elizabeth Montgomery movie soon, and it's not going to be... Um, the Legend of Lizzie Borden. It's a different one. It's a good one. 40 Wax. That was that last movie. Monty, Portland, Oregon, Vincent Tangella, and Mr. Livingston. You could keep the shipping container, sir. And it looks like a fabulous card. Oh, it is a fabulous card. Look at this. This is... I didn't know Hallmark carried this. It says, thank you, creature features. Hmm. No, Hallmark, right? I don't see a price. Maybe it's not Hallmark. All right, here we go. It goes, oh my goodness, there was cash. Yes, bring me cash. 20 American dollars? No, how much is, well, before you steal it, tell us how much. 40, 40 American dollars. All right, with a beautiful card. It must have been made by Monty. And he goes, dear Creature Features, three generations of my family watch your program every Saturday night. All I want to say is, well done. My daughter and I are former residents of Sonoma County, and it's like going home every Saturday. We love it. Monty in Portland. Well, thank you so much, uh, Monty and the Monty family. You suppose this is his last name? That's all he put. It was Monty. It's not like Mr. Monty. It's like... Monty it's family, been, perhaps. It could be the Montys. The Montys in Portland. Well, thank you so much. I, I love this card. I, where do we get these cards? You know, we could sell these. I, I bet you we, we'd make $50 or at least $40 on these, right? Perhaps. Selling cards. Portland, Oregon. I hear it's hot up there right now in Portland. It's hot everywhere. Right. Next up, Mr. Livingston. This is from British Columbia, Canada. Oh, our friends, the pages, the young pages. I thought there was two of these. 
They were. We're going to save one for next week. Next week. So we're going to show one today. So two sisters up in uh, Merritt, British Columbia, sent us this, these. And uh, we are saving the next one for next week. So we're doing this one first. And this one is from Melanie. Melanie. Melanie Page. Be careful, art inside. <laughs> no, I've never seen that warning label before. Be careful, art inside. Was that for the postman or for me? For the post. All right, what do we got? We've got, you know, it looks like she drew Pikachu. Is that Pikachu? No, it's not Pikachu. I don't know these things. All right, she made a, a title card called Mail Time. We'll put a big one up there. And that goes to you. She goes, uh, dear Creature Features, this is a good Mail Time poster. This drawing is a grasshopper, dragon grasshopper wing. I know I haven't mailed in a long time, but I still love making heinous drawing. What's a heinous drawing? Maybe heinous? Heinous? No. Well, maybe. No, she's writing hangness drawings. Uh, maybe it's these characters. We'll put a big one up and, and, and she could write in and identify. Um, but she made all these drawings and we're putting a big one up now. And uh, what else? She's got another one here, which is rather wonderful. And finally, this, this flying frog, which is incredible. And last, this is, a, this is a photo of something, which she does not explain. But what do you think this is? Don't you have a toy that looks like this? No, I don't know. In any case, thank you so much, Melanie, for writing. We hope uh, you and the family are doing well. And tell your sister we're going to have her letter next week, right? Yes. You promise you won't forget. I will not yeah, forget. Because they're on hmm. YouTube, and they will file a complaint with YouTube and, and get us in lots of trouble. So you won't allow that to happen, right? I will not allow that to he's, happen. He's a man of his word. Any more? That's it. That is it for mail. If you'd like to send us email of your own... Send it to this dress here, but include your city, please. Or if you'd like to send us hand-drawn photos, like our small friend Melanie Page up in British Columbia, send it to this address here. We'll be right back with Steve from Rancho Obi-Wan. But first, let's get back to Star Odyssey, 1979. Bad looking that bridge of landing, huh? <laughs> I'll take her over. Joe from Hercules leaves Norman Dave for standing. Oh, I spoke too soon. No, he's back on his feet. Just an exceptional man. Sure, I'll bet you. Don't you know what you're talking about. Don't do it. finish. Hmm. Hercules IV and Bill Norman are struggling for the title in the Android versus Human World Championship. Hercules IV has killed over a dozen opponents and given a new meaning to the word box. That's what the other guy goes home in. Norman is putting up a fine defense, but it's not easy for him to reach the Android KO button. He did it! One, two, three, four. Oh, 
activities as though his feet were swinging wildly. Three thousand. I'll stay. Well, you playing or not? Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Don't forget you're in a game. Jeff, wake up. Uh, it's your play. We're waiting. Uh, oh, sorry. Where are we? Three thousand. Uh, I'm staying in. Five thousand. Come. Twenty. Too much for me. No. Hmm. You'd like to play for high stakes. I'm sorry if it's too high. enough? I've had enough. Those are the brakes. <laughs> Just luck. Too much for me. Just too easy. But how could you know that I was bluffing? <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I have all the winning numbers now except one. So why go on? What's the point? You might as well give in graciously and come to bed. Not yet. You still haven't won. Everything depends on the final game. If I lose, you get all the money and the pleasure of a night with me. But if I win, you lose everything, the money and my body. Quite right. Let's play another one. It's a matter of purely academic interest to us now. What counts is that it really did happen, and now we have to do something. Flanagan, contact all observation satellites and bases and have them transmit any pictures they've managed to get of this UFO immediately. Yes, sir. Holly. Yes, sir. I want you to get me a spectrograph analysis from the chief of the observatory. Yes, sir. I need to know the substance this spacecraft is composed of and why it was resistant to our nuclear cannon attack. Yes, sir. We are in serious trouble. Perhaps the computer could make an analysis from the existing data. There's just a faint hope it can. At least in terms of probable choices, because it's absolutely vital to know immediately the defense systems used on the UFO. I'll find out, Commander. Ladies and gentlemen, the auction is now open. And to begin the sale, Troll, a seventh category planet with an unbreathable atmosphere, surrounded by asteroids bearing rich deposits of valuable minerals. Sun, Class G. I bid one million credits. A million credits. Lord Sin of Sastra bids one million credits for this valuable property with its immense natural resources. Do I hear a better offer? Gone to Sin of Sastria for one million credits. The next item on offer is Horvath IV, a third category planet, abounding in surface lichens and other forms of plant life on the seabed. Two million credits. Three million. Five million. Lord Gar of Torkoal bids five million credits. Do I hear a higher bid? Going, going. 
Gone to Gar of Tokel for five million credits. Congratulations, Lord Gar. You've got a bargain there. Life is most rare in the universe. But I've been reliably informed that today they're auctioning a small planet on the edge of the galaxy. With humans on it. Farkas, 15. Rich in Talium. Homo sapiens? Slaves. Millions of slaves just waiting to have their thoughts erased. Clearly by some person who has sufficient ships to transport them. Will no one offer two million credits? Very well. The planet is withdrawn from the sale. You can sell some to me. I'll pay a thousand credits each. It's a deal. Provided Gore of Tarkwell doesn't succeed in outbidding us, with the aid of the Aptoneus. And now, Lords of the Galaxy, the main item of today's sale, Sol 3. It has rarely been my privilege to put such a remarkable world on the block. It is a third category planet belonging to a Class B sun. It's known as Earth. Six million. Twelve million credits. Sol 3 is immensely rich in every type of life, animal, bacterial, and plant, all in various stages of evolution. The gravity factor is 1.3, the atmosphere breathable. But in addition to all this, it is teeming with the rarest of all life forms, humans. 20 million credits. I bid 30 million. 32 million. 50 million. 50 million credits for Sol 3. Will anyone go higher? 60 million. You again? Do I hear a higher bid? Seventy million. Seventy million for Sol Why don't you three. go to one hundred million? I, I can get it. A hundred million. Kess of Kobo has bid one hundred million credits. Do I hear a higher offer? Going for one hundred million credits. To Kess of Kobo for one hundred million credits. of Kobo, or you will violate the high law. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. Welcome back to Creature Features, watching Star Odyssey with our friend Steve Sansweet from Rancho Obi-Wan. That's Kenobi for those who didn't know. Obi-Wan. Yeah, someone was asking me, how do, how do they know it's, it's like a Star Wars related thing if it's called Rancho Obi-Wan? I mean, if you put Obi-Wan on anything, <laughs> you know it's Star Wars, right? Absolutely. And I mean, Obi-Wan is my favorite character, thus the name of Rancho Obi-Wan. Of course. He was the mentor. He was the one who led Luke Skywalker to go on his amazing journey. That's right. No, and he was he was uh, Sir uh, Alec Guinness at one point, which is and Ewan McGregor is the follow up. So you can't go wrong with either of those yeah. actors. I like Ewan. Oh, you know, I like saying his name in in Scottish. I like to go Ewan McGregor. Very no, good. it's just it just rolls off the tongue. Anyways, uh, Star Odyssey. Uh, so this this film is, as you said, one of the knockoffs that came out after the original Star Wars. I mean, how many of these must there be? Dozens. In Dozens. fact, there was one called the Turkish Star Wars in Turkish, Turkish. 
and there are some posters out there for it. You can actually find it on YouTube under Turkish, Turkish Star Wars. So is there English subtitles? No. Or how do they, no. It's you, purely you, you don't Turkish. want to ruin it with English subtitles. I imagine not. No, <laughs> no. The Turkish, we, we need to get that one, Tom. And then we'll, we'll ask a Turkish friend to, to put subtitles so our viewers know what's going on. But uh, uh, that's amazing. So uh, did, did Lucas ever like try to make trouble for these people? I think, well, actually, when Battlestar Galactica started airing on television, Lucasfilm sued that Universal. Blatant. That one was blatant. That was, right. yeah. No, no. Everything looked the same. I remember it that. It was done by the same special effects right. technicians. No, no, that's wrong. That's wrong. Anyways, uh, but the remake did not look like that, right? Of uh, Battlestar Galactica. No, they right. learned their lesson. Right, right. So uh, back to your story. You were working at Lucasfilm. You already had a sizable collection. Which kept growing after the prequels and the special editions had come right. out. So um, I was faced with a problem. I knew I'd be retiring from Lucasfilm in 2011. And um, I had a lot of stuff in boxes still. Right. We had a second chicken barn. A chicken barn. A chicken barn. That's what the museum is housed in. Two Three chicken that barns. beautiful facility I went to was a chicken barn. Was a chicken barn. It had egg laying. Egg had 20,000 chickens up until the early 1970s. Oh my goodness. The whole area was chicken farms. I did not smell any chicken manure when Let's I went there. Let's hope not. No, you did a good job cleaning it up. <laughs> and painting and, and fixing. Pain, and no, it's a gorgeous changing. facility. So we thought what would be better we had friends come over and associates and things like that to see the collection but it was just sort of on these shelves right and um my number two ann newman had been with me for a couple of years and she was doing the inventory for rancho obi-wan right and we talked about turning it into a non-profit and being able to do tours right which is what we do now and so we expanded the museum we added this back barn facility and added some really nice touches and became a nonprofit of 501c3. Very nice. So just so our viewers know, he's talking about chicken houses and barns and things. But from the outside, it looks like it looks like a commercial like warehouse type thing. Yeah. And on the inside, it's gorgeous. And we're, we're going to be putting up images of that. But uh, it's incredible. So you can... Uh, People can go for a fee and get a tour, but uh, you also host events there as well, right? Right. We have our annual gala once a year with up to 150 people there. My goodness. And we've had other events. We've done events for Nissan when they put out their Nissan Rogue when the movie right. came out. Right. And um, we have birthday parties and... Smaller events, larger events. How fun. It is a lot of fun. So they could learn uh, all about this at uh, RanchoObiWan.org. Yes. Right. RanchoObiWan.org. We're going to put that up early so you guys know. We'll put it up again later. And uh, let's get back to the film. And then when we come back, we're going to find out how you did your first building. Right? Okay. All right. Off we go to Star Odyssey. I, apologies in advance. Thanks for reanimating me. If you want to thank me, there's an easy way to do it. I think I know what it is. It's a terrible bore being under the freeze ray for a warm-hearted girl. I know how to be nice to a man I like. I can make the right person feel all kinds of pleasures and thrills. And you are the kind of person I go for. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of waiting, unable to even move, but dying for a man. Oh! <laughs> 
4. Attempted breakout. Emergency squad to sector 4. Attempted breakout. All available wards will converge on sector 4 and restore order. Good thing you're not from the department. I've just had to declare a full-scale emergency to stifle a breakout. Naturally, it's always the same two detainees who ruin things. That damn Bridget and Sean. Ah! Uh! Blast them. I rue the day I ever let them into my penitentiary. They've tried to escape four times. They caused nothing but trouble. But I can tell you they're going to be thoroughly sorry because I shall transfer the two of them to a prison asteroid and they can rot in solitary confinement. But of course, this is of no interest to you. It's just my problem. And I fear I've neglected to ask you, how can I be of assistance? Uh, that is to say, what is uh, the reason for your visit? I'll come right to the point. prisoners, Bridget Landham and Sean James. <laughs> well, my dears, uh, these two gentlemen have come all the way here just for you. I'd like to introduce you. Uh, I think we can skip the introduction. Naturally, naturally. To continue, I propose that we reward the good conduct and excellent behavior that has made your model to all the prisoners on Moon Space. And so I intend to, I intend to, I intend to, to shorten your sentences by the remaining 78 years and release you in the custody of these two gentlemen who will escort you back to Earth. It's crazy of you, Irene, to bet all that money on me, but I sure am glad to see you again. It must be years since the last time we met. I knew you'd win the fight. My uncle says nobody can fight like you can. Whenever anybody talks about fighting, he always mentions you. He needs your help, Norman. 
And we're, I'm afraid that we're all going to be needing a lot of help because of that flying saucer. But I heard the news report about it. They said the situation was completely under control by now. It's not true. That's why Uncle is reforming the old team. And of course, that includes you. If the professor needs me, that's okay. But I want to bring along a couple of friends. They could be very useful. Understand, there isn't a living soul around here. But I never mentioned living souls, Irene. Hey, look in that pile of junk. That's one of them. Come on. Five hours over this. Uncle will be furious. Take it easy, Irene. You'll soon see that your five hours haven't been wasted. Okay, now replace the power unit. You take micro batteries, too. Down here. There, perfect. Say something, Tilt. Damn you, Norman, you interfering, warm-blooded animal. Who authorized you to reactivate me? Why can't two poor robots commit suicide in peace without some meddling human recharging their circuits? Tilly and I wanted to put an end to it all because... Now, let me see. What was it exactly? Anyway, you should have kept out of it. What's that noise? Oh, why, it's her! Starting the journey to the eternal nothing. Hurry, there's not a minute to lose. If you don't want me to go to pieces again, you must save her. Quick, before her tender tin limbs are crushed like kitchen foil in that cruel machine. Oh, Tilly, my precious Tilly. You won't make it in time, Tilly. Darling, light of my transistors. Tilly, sweet little Tilly. Thank heaven he made it in time. She's beautiful, isn't she? Oh, yes. She's really beautiful. We're engaged, beautiful. you know. We love each other deeply. <clears throat> Quick, Norman. Get the trash off her. It's such an indignity for her, mixing with junk from such low-class machines. Hurry! Hurry! I doubt you came provided with fresh micro batteries for her, too. Uh-huh. Tilly, my treasure. Are you all right? Tilly, my dear, is that you? Are we in robot heaven? 
I expected something different. No, Tilly, we're not dead. We've been reactivated. Oh, darling, I wondered if I'd ever see you again. I'm sorry our suicide pact was a failure. It was such a romantic idea. And I know how hard you tried to make it work. I don't mind, Tilt. One can't have everything in life. By the way, Tilly, I must have a splintered crystal in my memory bank. I can't remember why we made a suicide pact. You can't remember? Oh, Tilt, how can you be so unfeeling? It was because... Let me see. It was because we decided to end it all. Yes, but why? Why? Oh, dear. I can't remember either. And you really think that these two funny little robots can actually be of some use to us? Don't judge them by appearances. They're full of surprises. Tilt once got me out of a very tricky situation. He's able to project an energy field around his plating so that moving objects pass through without touching. These two units were designed as one of a series of far-out experiments to see if they could create robots with human emotions. They were only partially successful. However, there are several areas where they produce quite unexpected results. Now I'll demonstrate for you how Tilt can cope with any adversary. It's extraordinary. I'll try to hit him with this pole. Just watch. Hey, Tilt! What is it? Can't you see I'm busy? On guard! Are you crazy? No, it's all right. Just kidding. Kidding, he calls it. Hi, this is Don from Maxwell, New Mexico. I only recently discovered your channel, and I'm delighted. It's so bad, it's good, if that makes sense. A little gal, you need to show her without all that makeup on. I think she's the star there. Okay, my friend, good job. Hello, this is Livingston. Apparently, one of my newly acquired domestic duties is to request help for our show financially by asking you to visit our patron page. Your generosity will help keep Creature Features on the air, which I'm not entirely sure is a good thing. However, with only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new programming each week, which apparently some of you curiously enjoy. And should you have the desire to give even more, you might even receive a gift from Miss Tangella. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. You, you really think that's what it is, a 55-gallon drum? It was a 55-gallon drum. Yeah, that's no way to make a robot. Obscene. No, and it's, I suppose it's their version of R2-D2, right? Yeah, I've got a lot of r 2 d I saw that. No, you, you've got the most R2-D2s I've ever seen one human ever have. Oh, there are people who specialize in certain things in Star Wars, so there are R2-D2 collectors. Right. Just R2-D2s. Nothing else. Hundreds, if not thousands of them. Every size Every imaginable. size from this big to this big. Now, is the largest R2 unit you've ever seen only the life size? I've seen a blow-up R2 unit huh? that is about twice the size right. of the... Right of the electronic one that is used in the films. Somebody, one of these R2 guys you're talking about, needs to build a giant one where a team of people could get inside and drive it. Sort of like a Japanese robot. Yes. Very and cool. And you know a thing or two about those. Well, I, I did a, um, I was Lord Mayor of London in a docu, a mockumentary right. that was made many years ago by my friend Don Bees in Petaluma. Right. And it was all about the true Hollywood story of R2-D2 about how he got down on his luck, became a drunk and a drug user. Lucasfilm approved this. This actually aired on Fox. Oh, my goodness. And um, they sold the DVD of it under the dome. It was great. Very funny.
I'm surprised George would let something like that fly. He has a sense of humor. It would never happen now with the whole Disney thing. What do you think about that, Disney owning? Well, I, uh, you know, when I was told about that the first time, I said it makes sense. I right. mean, George wasn't going to leave the company to anybody. No. Um, his kids weren't interested in running it, and they were too young anyway. And Disney was the place where Star Wars probably should have gone in the first place. Right. But Disney wasn't doing those kinds of films back then. Right. However. <laughs> well, I mean, the TV series that they've done have been amazing. The, the Mandalorian. Mandalorian right. is great. I right. loved Obi-Wan Kenobi. Right. Um, and there are some of the animated series, like the Clone Wars series, has been spectacular. Right. George worked on that with the director, Dave Filoni, who is now working with Jon Favreau doing the other series. Right. So it's, uh, it's come they're, full they're, circle. They're still getting their feet wet, I think, with, with the films. They're still trying to get it there's right. A lot of, uh, there's a lot of differences in the fan community about the quality of the films, the sequels. Right. And so I think they're going to go back and they're going to make independent films. Um, not, oh, really? a, not a trilogy. The Skywalker story is finished, so these will be new characters, new aliens, new planets. Right. It'll be interesting. And then fr from that point, I, everything, everybody should be happy with that because it's like new. It's not like yeah. the changing something that... Uh, or redoing or right. rebooting. Exactly. You right. don't want that. Right. So uh, on the collection, all right, so now you're in three buildings... How far are you going to go? That's it. We also have an off-site warehouse of 7,000 square feet. Oh, my goodness. Which is full. It's full, 7,000 square feet. So what uh, goes there? What, how do you decide what goes? Excuse me a second. The, the mansion has a lot of space. Do you, do you have any storage For a Star areas? Wars collection? Yes, if it's good stuff. <laughs> if you bring the good stuff. Like you had a speeder outside of your front, front door. Yeah, it's what sort of What was the story seen... on that? It sort of seemed, it's an actual, the actual base of the speeder was done by ILM guys on their free time for a fan. Oh. And so I inherited that and got some people to fix it up. And right. it, it has since been weathered and the windshield has sort of melted. Right. So things well, outside don't last no, too long. No, but you know, it, it's got to look, it, it makes it look like you operate a Star Wars junkyard where that is like an old speeder that somebody liked to commission and it's now parked in your front yard and you're going to fix it up one day. If my mother was still with us, she would say that the inside of the museum was a Star Wars junkyard. No, no, the inside, the inside is pristine. The inside is pristine. The outside, he's got, and what's the other thing? It was like a, a ride. The, yeah, the, it was a bootleg uh, X-Wing fighter from a carnival back in the 80s. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Found it on eBay. Incredible. You never know what you're going to find That's on right. eBay. That's right. Well, you never know what you're going to find on Creature Features like this film, which we have to get back to. But uh, when we come back, let's, uh, let's find out uh, what you are doing next as far as uh, adventures in the world of collecting. And uh, right now we've got to get back to this Star Odyssey thing. But uh, hopefully it will end soon. Right? Right, Tom? Well. Soon. All right. See you on the other side of the break. The acceleration is so rapid it appears to vanish, and they can evidently reach a velocity of several parsecs. All these clips we've been looking at were collected by our space observatories. And just before Earth fall, the saucer disappeared from our radar, so they must be using a scrambler. Commander, the alien vessel has landed near Hiroshima and captured over 800 people. This is the 24th raid they've carried out, starting with those farmers in United Africa, then the Arabs, the Russians, and now the Japanese, if word of this gets out. We'll have panic over the entire planet. Lloyd, get working on the computer and start to prepare an accurate map of all the places the alien vessel has landed. Then see if you can determine any logic on the basis of which the aliens chose those places. And discover their next probable objective. I'll try, sir. If we succeed, I have decided to prepare an atomic ambush for the aliens. Maybe we wanted to die because we felt old and out of date. Oh, no. 130 isn't old for a robot, and we're still very spry and shiny. I think it was because I wanted to have children. Great integrated circuits. What's that thing? Look, Tilly, a prehistoric cave robot. I've never seen anything so ugly. 
I say creatures like this shouldn't be allowed to run around loose. They ought to be kept in zoos. Now, Tails, that's just prejudice. He has as much right to activate as we have, even if his skin is a different color. The situation is desperate. The government consists of men who are completely unimaginative. So if we want the world to survive, we have to do the job ourselves. Our chief hope lies in Sean and Bridget. They've been studying the structure of Indirium for many years, but their reasons for doing so are highly personal <laughs> and could not properly be defined as scientific. <laughs> as far as that goes, we had some help from a boxer by the name of Norman and a gambler called Dirk Laramie, both of whom are now playing innocent. My allusion was to the case of the 128 tons of synthetic gold, a quantity which could easily have destroyed the economic equilibrium of the entire world had it ever reached the open market. 128 tons of synthetic gold? 128 tons, that's right. The scandal didn't die down for years, but unfortunately I had no choice but to withdraw from politics. Now just a minute, Professor. We weren't only thinking of ourselves, you know. We planned things so that our friends would also uh, get in trouble with you. That's uh, all water under the bridge. What counts is that our old team has been reformed once more. And now, let's get back to the Indirium. How far did you get with your research? We completed the analysis of its molecular structure. If we'd had a few more months, we would have been able to synthesize it under laboratory conditions. That's excellent. Now you have to continue. You must find a weak point in the molecular structure of Indirium that would lead to its disintegration and destruction. Do you think you can do it? Well, we can always try. Just tell me what equipment you need, and you can start work right away. Well, we can use your old laboratory, but there's one essential item that you haven't got. Hmm? A few grams of endurium. If that's all you need, there's no problem. This container holds pure endurium. You can imagine how difficult it was to come by. Then we're all set. Professor, Go. what are the rest of us supposed to For do? For the moment, your duty is to ensure the safety of Sean and Bridget. You didn't need space pilots like us to do that. Well, of course not. But you can't really go into action until we have a suitable weapon. Our space fleet has already tried using conventional weapons against these aliens, atomic cannons, lasers, and so on, but they've been quite useless. At the moment, we are in the same condition as the ignorant savage who tries to attack a nuclear tank with a bow and arrow. Send a message to Kobo to accelerate the preparation of cargo vessels. At the rate we're going, we'll soon have goods to fill at least 10. Yes, sir. Check the surrounding area on the monitor to see if there's any activity on the part of the indigenous troops. Instruction followed. What's that? I just felt a contact with an alien brain. A very powerful one. Strange, it's the first time that it's happened on this planet. Perhaps I wanted to die because you were getting too friendly with that speak your weight machine. Isn't that just like a woman? Now don't pull that macho stuff with me, you male chauvinist robot. I didn't mean it like that. It's just that if you get jealous every time I wink at a cute calculator... Who said anything about jealousy? It's a question of robot dignity. Have it your way, but let's not argue about I'm it. I'm not arguing. You're the one who's arguing. Careful you don't make those holes too deep. Otherwise, the electromagnetic discharge won't be violent enough. Listen, Billy, I 
written a poem for you. Want to hear it? It's called Passion in a Printed Circuit. decided to return to their own planet. Unfortunately, it's a most probable hypothesis. Because in all likelihood, they will return in greater force. And we are still defenseless. There's absolutely nothing we can do to stop them. Sean and Bridget are continuing with their experiments. But they haven't had any positive results. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm going to take some food to the boys outside. <laughs> they must be starving. Be sure to give them an equal ration. Oh, no, you know Holly. He'd never dream of accepting preferential treatment over the others. I was really thinking more of Dirk. Would he accept it? <laughs> Get it through your head, Uncle. Between Dirk and me, it's all over. Steve, come and give me a hand. got an overloaded imagination circuit. Oh, Bob, hurry. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> That's a me, you fool, to him. Ah, oh, yes, him. Oui, oui, mon général. Have you guys gone crazy? If we had the time, I'd haul you before a court-martial. Oh, boy, Quiet. Didn't you hear that noise? It sounded like a scream. Perhaps it was her brain I felt that contact with. But there is no way to tell until she regains consciousness. Go and capture the others. A stroll in the woods is very romantic, but I wish you'd stroll a little faster. Come on. Why don't we carve our names on a tree in a heart? No, we can't do that because a tree is a living thing, and the law of robotics won't let robots damage living things. We can only damage each other. Like the way you hurt me by flirting with that automatic shoe polisher. Me? With a slot machine? Never. Shh, what's that? Someone's coming. Tilt, I'm frightened. They must be the aliens. Cut out your anxiety circuits and keep calm. I'll protect you. Oh, Tilt. How rude. They didn't even look at us. There must be some reason. I'll process the data on my probability computer. We better warn the others. Come on. Yes, you're right. Let's go. They're here. They're here. Who 
who's here? Who do you mean, Tilly? The extraterrestrials. You don't mean the aliens? Yes. We just saw them in the woods, coming this way. <laughs> Quick, Tilly. You better go and warn the others. Tell them Tilly and I are waiting back here. I'm on my way. Open fire when I give you the order. The hero is taking command of the operation. Forward, men! Fire! very long. Listen, you two, go and warn the professor. Okay. Come on, Tilly. Fall back. Quick, to the house. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best.
Professor, the alien invaders are overwhelming our defending forces. I'm aware of it. Hallie wants to know what they should do. I think you'd better warn Sean and Bridget. searching again. And it's not the girl. It's a brain of great intelligence. The electro bombs. Hard to even slow them down. are nearly invulnerable. Yeah, but with this sword, I was able to knock out eight. That means we finally got a weapon we can fight him with. Everyone take these pills. It's an interesting device, this sword. I wonder what principle... to capture humans. You see, they're not even aware of us. We're perfectly safe. There's no trace of life in these bodies. They've auto-destructed. Give the information to Lord Kess. Auto-destructed. Yet I still sense the presence of that other brain. Put a brain lock on her and set her free. She will be our weapon. Return aboard. with it, Professor Morey. Thanks to Sean and Bridget with those pills of theirs that made everybody look dead. We fooled them. They went away because they thought we were dead, but those creatures aren't human. They're androids. I saw the evidence with my own eyes. One of them broke in two, and he was all filled with gears and wires and electronic stuff. So they're androids. That means life is relatively rare on their world. Norman has succeeded in getting hold of one of their weapons. I feel sure that if I analyze it, I could make copies of it and even find a lead to the secret of anti -enderia. Back to the lab, then, and get on with it. Right. Come on, Bridget. I, too, have a little surprise for the invaders. If it works, it may be the answer to our problems. Now I have to concentrate. <laughs>
Section one. All clear, sir. Section two. All clear, sir. Someone is preventing our lift off with a telepathic net. It's quite incredible. To find such a brain on a planet at this stage of evolution. Can't believe it. discovered an incredible thing here. One of these Earth people has a mental force similar to ours. After making our collection of samples, I prepared for departure, but a telepathic net is keeping me blocked on the ground. Erase his mind and return. Pity. What an opportunity to dominate the galaxy. If we sold slaves like this, we could destroy our competition and control the entire market. With one, how? Analyzing his mental powers, I could construct a brain pattern and imprint it on similar brains. As soon as the ships arrive, I'll send you some samples. All right, go ahead. Thank you, both. Set for generating units, sir. What were our losses? 18 seriously damaged, considering large number of slaves collected. Minimum required reduplicates is 50. It's important. Look at this. A positive reaction, see? It works at last. Yes. It's turning into a mass of molecules. <gasps> it's anti-enderium. You're right. <gasps> it's anti-enderium. <Yes>. Hooray! <laughs> We've done it at last. <laughs> Moon reminds me of the time when you and I used to coo like doves the way Tilt and Tilly are doing right now. Okay, okay, forget it. Who gave you that? Your toy soldier? That's none of your business. Oh, the anti -enderium. It's unstable. Another failure. We don't have a hope. You don't give the impression that you're really very worried about all this. Hmm? You know something? I've never stopped thinking about you in all these years, Irene. Let's have a look at the laboratory. All right, whatever you say. Yes, but this damp air makes me feel a bit rusty. That's all in your mind. You found the correct path, at least. Sure. The only trouble is, if we can't make the anti enderium stable, it will kill us. <laughs> Keep your chin up, Bridget. Mm, I was so happy. I thought we'd done it at last. What was all that noise? How's a guy supposed to sleep in this joint? Ah, I see you've been playing with fireworks again. We've had a very serious... These flesh and blood creatures certainly go at things the hard way. You're right. 
they manage to discover anti-enderium, then start shorting their circuits because they can't make the compound stable. But any compound can be made stable. Even a pocket calculator knows that. Why don't we try to do it? You go ahead. I was never very well programmed in chemistry. All right, we'll do a quick spectrographic analysis, and then we just have to raise the critical temperature by adding a little pinch of this. Are you sure it will work? If not, we'll all go together. Hey, those two robots, look what they're doing. Oh, my God. They're going to kill us all. Hit the dirt oh. undercover. Oh. Keep your heads down, man. You see, less than 1% antimony, and the compound has become stable. Oh, Tilt, you're so clever. I would have tried to do it with the inverse infinity ratio. He's done it. With antimony. He's found the answer. It doesn't explode. Tilt is an explosive. The antimonium is stable? Splendid work. Now there's a chance for us. My compliment. <laughs> hey, keep your hands to yourself. That was great work, kids. I'm really proud of you. Terrific. I can understand your enthusiasm. It's more than justified. And my compliments to our robot researchers, too. <laughs> But now we must start to prepare a plan for the destruction of the alien enemy. Before we can accomplish this, we must possess a large quantity of anti enderium which Sean and Bridget can synthesize tonight, all ready for Holly to bring out to the base. But they'll arrest me. They'll give you a medal, I'll bet. <laughs> This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. I'm confused, Steve Sansweet from Rancher Obi-Wan. Those are supposed to be lightsabers. Well, you know, even George Lucas sometimes called them laser swords in the very beginning. So right, wooden yeah. lightsabers. But be did a he difficult. actually use wedges of wood painted silver? No, he used uh, camera flash tube right. things. No, he, he put some thought into the process. Yeah, well, he had a lot These of good blokes. people working for him. Right. These blokes did not. I'm pretty no, sure they were the just people trying. who made this film... I, I don't think they did any research. I think this film took a long time to make, probably at least three weeks. Uh, right, <laughs> yes. All right, well, uh, we're going to be wrapping that one up soon, but uh, uh, your stuff, uh, you, as uh, as far as uh, collectibles go, you don't just have figurines and things like that. You've got a massive library. We've got a wonderful library with books from 30 countries, books in Braille, uh, all kinds of books, from kids' books to young adult books right. to the novelizations, all kinds of thousands of comic books from, again, all over the world. Right. And uh, magazines, again, worldwide. And then we also have an arcade, which we end that. the tour. Right. So we have the original Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi um, uh, visual games. And we have pinball games. The very first arcade game was from Australia. Australia. In 1982, we've got that. The first one was in 1982. It took, it took what, five years for somebody to make a video game? Yeah. The what video games make? came out in 1983, Star uh -huh. Wars and Empire. And then in 1984, a year after Jedi, the Jedi game came out. I didn't know it took so long. I suppose back in the 70s, all they had was like Pong, right? You know, That's where was, it started. There was not a lot of technology back in the 70s for computers. Pong and the Odyssey game from right. Magnavox. No, I all remember. Those were fun. One. Yeah. I mean, it was better than going to an arcade and spending quarters. I, you know, I wonder if arcades are the same price today. I doubt it. You think it's like a dollar a shot to or, play a game? Or more. Oh, my goodness. No, that's ridiculous. 
And well, I thought a quarter our was games are our games are all set on free play at Rancho. Of course, because he's got the key to the coin box. Yes, I do. Right, right, <laughs> right. That's incredible. Well, what do you say we wrap up this film, and then uh, when we come back, we're going to find out uh, what you're doing next. Okay. All right. Off we go to the end of Star Odyssey, and uh, it couldn't come soon enough. manage to fit out more than five space fighters. That's the most our technicians will have time to prepare. That'll be enough, provided we're able to utilize the surprise factor. Right now, you'd better get some rest. You'll have to be in top form tomorrow. We'll attack as soon as the ships are fitted out. We've got to sound the alarm. Wake everybody up. Wait a minute. That reminds me. Now I remember why we wanted to commit suicide. All right. Let's hear it. Not that I have much faith in your memory anymore. <laughs> anyway, we wanted to commit suicide because we could never go to sleep. I knew it. What a silly idea. I've never felt the slightest desire to go to sleep. It's just a waste of time. No, it isn't. I remember that you wanted to sleep so you could dream about me. And you persuaded me that we should commit suicide because if you couldn't dream about me, your whole life had no meaning. And I wanted to dream about you, that's what... I'm going back to the base. The attack is set for tomorrow morning. With only five ships, it's a hopeless mission. Lieutenant Carrera, the aliens have captured Professor Mori. What? I got sidetracked and forgot to sound the alarm. Sound the alarm? Why? What's wrong? Tilt just said that the aliens have captured Professor Mori. And Irene, too. She was acting real funny, like she was hypnotized and just trailing after them. They'll be in that ship. Come on, let's go. One moment, everyone. What are you going to fight them with? Your fists and your feet? Come to the laboratory and get your weapons. I've treated your old space suits with a flexible alloy made of endurium. I've also made a number of swords similar to the ones the aliens use, but better. Look at that chest. With these, all you have to do is touch the androids and they'll be irreparably damaged. You've done a great job, Sean. Just like Charles Atlas. <laughs> when he was just a frail weakling. What's that? The hero's death. I had to challenge you to a duel for that. Come on, make it snappy. We have to hurry. Why did you want to start out alone? We should have waited for the others. The aliens are taking the professor aboard their spaceship. We have to do something. Yeah, we do. Like run away. Get out of here. I'm frightened. There's nothing to be afraid of. They're not programmed to recognize us. They can't even see us. Well, this one must have the wrong program. So long. No, hold on, Tilly. Where are you going? Wait. Ah, uh, these robot women. Oh, my God. 
Joe, I'll go and look for my uncle. You let the opinion. Here, take this. All right, but... What? What's happening? Are you all right? Something's happened to Tilly. I've lost psycho contact with her. Whenever this occurs, all my programs zero out, and I can't move anymore. Wait here. I have no choice. What are you waiting here for? Why don't we attack? Calm down. We got here too late. There's no way for us to get inside the ship now. Unless, of course, someone inside opens the hatch. But Irene's in there. She might be in danger. Tilly is our only hope. If we manage to reactivate her, she can put us in contact with Tilt. Norman, you're the only one who knows how robots operate. There's nothing to worry about. I'll put her right in the flesh. But why don't we attack right away? Don't you understand? We have to wait. Didn't you hear? Of course. Loud and clear. Uncle. Uncle. Wake up, Uncle. Where are we? The aliens kidnapped you and brought you to their spaceship. Oh. We have to get out of here. Come on. I don't know if I can make it. How did it ever happen? I'll explain later. Come on. You are connected to Android Captain of Cargo Fleet in arrival, Lord Kess. Prepare stowage space. You'll probably need accommodation for over one million slaves. Let me know when you're ready to load. We will follow your orders. <laughs> there. Bill. That's it. Bill, where are you? She was. <laughs> where are you, Bill? Let's get her back. Bill. There you go. Good girl. Come on, everybody. Quick. Irene and the professor are in here. Hurry. Here we are, Tilt. We're coming. So the instruments show native activity outside the vessel. Follow order 24B. Destroy natives. Use nucleonic ray. Wait outside, Tilly. Hurry, everyone. Inside, quick. Come on, hurry. Something strange here, sir. The natives seem to have gone now. Hurry, Uncle. You must try hard. We have to get to the exit. Come on. You go ahead, Irene. I can't go any further. Huh? Uncle! humans have succeeded in entering our vessel armed with Indirium swords. We need reinforcements. I'll deal with it at once. Oh. Oh. Look out, Uncle! Uh. Professor Mori! Professor! <laughs> More natives have entered. I've sealed off the slave compartment, sir. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> 
Are you all right, Professor? We must get out of here. We're in danger. They can't hold out much longer. They're pretty delicate, these androids, huh? Let's go before some more arrive. Ha! Professor Mori, you're safe, thank goodness. But where's Irene? They've locked her in that room there. See if you can get her out. I just can't manage it. Poor deluded fools. I'll teach you to rebel against your new master. You will all die in atrocious agony. I can feel that mind again. Do what you can, Dirk. I have to get away. Get him out of here, quick. <sighs> the temperature's rising rapidly. Quick, quick, head for the door, everyone, or we'll all be burned alive. Retreat! Thank goodness we're together again, Tilt. Irene! 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 Can you hear me? Irene, do you feel my mind? Yes. I can sense that you do. Now relax. Drive all thought from your mind. Concentrate. Concentrate. Because if we unite our mental energy, we may be able to open the door. The controls here operate on telepathic command. Think strongly along with me. Open. 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 Quick. They're getting ready to lift off. They've started the reactors. Reed and I will go back to the laboratory. Perhaps we can be of some use there. Come along. Tilt and Tilly, come with us. Let's go. Jacob, where's Norman? Hey, get away from the ship. I just made it, Hunter. You sure did. Look at her go. She's huge. Gigantic. Quick, we gotta go after her and the fighters. To the base. This brief moment of tranquility has been brought to you by Nightscape.
Relax and sleep better every single night with this and other videos from our free YouTube channel. Learn more by visiting nightscape.co today. Commander, Commander, our hyper radar is signaling the approach of a fleet of alien vessels. The computer has analyzed their course and they are heading for a rendezvous with a flying saucer. Did you hear that, Flanagan? There are more aliens. Let's get the first bunch now. We'll get rid of them before their friends come and help. I'm Lieutenant Carrera. I order you to let us pass. My men and I have to launch a fighter attack at once on the alien vessel. And I order you to follow me. You're under arrest. Arrest? Not before I speak with Commander Barr. Impossible. At the moment, Commander Barr is on a mission. <coughs> Quick, we haven't got a second to lose. I have 16 cargo vessels with me. There are native fighters on our screens. I'm awaiting your instructions. Get ready to attack. There are just two. And they can't be dangerous. The planet is an L2. They're only barbarians. They have no weapons against Enderium. Destroy them. Flanagan, the anti enderium doesn't help us at all. They're traveling at such a high velocity that our shots don't even reach them. What do you think we should do now, Commander? I suggest we return to the station. I'll try one more attack. If it fails, we'll go back to base. Matrix for attack outline 1820. Attack potential 2. Very good, sir. Follow it. Look out, Commander. You've got one on your tail. Destroy it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Bar's been hit. Flanagan and Barr have been hit. Now, it's up to us. And it'll be tough. Let me go ahead, Dirk. I want to avenge my commander. <laughs> Hollywood. Okay, go ahead. It's suicide, Dirk. We'll never manage to do it. Their velocity is superior to ours. They're going into battle. We must do something to help them, or they don't have a chance. Of course, there's one way I might help out. All of the aliens are concentrated in Sector M. If I could get my concentration back again, I think I could manage to interfere with their power drives and slow down their propulsor engines, putting our fleet on an equal footing with the aliens, but only for a minute. Straight ahead. Attention, please. This is base calling. You can get at the enemy now. Professor Mari is slowing down their drive system with telepathy.
on, Bridget. There's another formation of aliens on your tail. Holly, there are two more beside you. I got their range. I'm right on top of them. They're all mine. Look out! You're going too far! Sean. Where is he? I can't locate him, Bridget. Don't you worry. I'll take care of it. I got him, Sean. You see that? Look out, everyone. There are more coming. You don't hit the craft with the prisoners. We'll have to try to force it to land. Holly, be careful. There's one after you. I'll force you to land, you bastards. We must retreat, sir. We only have two craft left. Sacrifice them. Crash dive into those native fighters. Yes, Lord Kess. Look out, Holly! There are two of them homing in on you. I've been hit. This is Holly. Holly here. I've been hit. They're following me. Hold tight, Holly. I'm on my way. Even in the great days of Hollywood, no movie star ever died so heroically. <laughs> Sean, Bridget, they're all yours. Okay, Dirk, we'll follow them. Sean, they're out distancing us. We'll have to increase velocity. eliminated the remaining saucers here, but I don't see you on the radar. Where are you? We're right on his tail, Dirk. We won't give up if he goes to the end of the universe. I finally remembered why we wanted to commit suicide. Really, Tilt? Yes, because you could never prove your love by going all the way with me. That's right. Now I remember too. But what do we do now? Commit suicide again? But there's no need. I can make some little design changes, adjust a few details, 
and you can prove your love like any other people. <laughs> Simple. Lord Kess of Cobo is offering Sol three today. I hardly need say that this is a remarkable opportunity. A planet teeming with every sort of life, animal life, plant life, and human life. Slaves of every color, 10 billion slaves, all strong and healthy, like these two samples Kess of Cobor has brought along with him. 100 million credits. 200 million. My lord, this planet is unique. Therefore, the starting price is 300 million credits. It's worth more than that. Over 10 billion human slaves just waiting until they're captured. 600 million credits. Mm. 600 million credits. Lord Gar of Torquil has made a generous offer. Very generous offer. I concede ownership of Sol 3. I hope you enjoy it. You get 50%. You two swindlers. But what can you do with all that money? The agreement was 50% plus the prisoners. That's for all that money. I think I'd like to get a nice little planet of our own. Ladies and gentlemen, the off. Hollywood's dead. Oh, no. No, no, I'm, I'm quite glad. I didn't like the man. Hollywood, there's no spaceman named Hollywood. Would, would George Lucas ever name anybody Hollywood in one of his movies? No, but I Luke know. Skywalker See? comes close. That's true, eh? No, he's right. He's right. What did you think of the film? No? Didn't like it? Did you like anything about the film? No. Uh, the duck-faced robots. I like them, too. Yeah. They were well, weird. I, I suppose if you're going to make a robot, a duck face would be a good choice of face. <laughs> no, but uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll show this movie. You know, this is the second time we've shown this film. I completely forgot about it. But uh, we'll show it again in like five years. So it, we'll see you in five years on that movie. But uh, enough about that. Uh, Mr. Steve, what are you doing next? Well, we're uh, looking for more tours to come. Right. Uh, we have a... a Pent up demand for tours from you people. Do. We expect people internationally to start arriving right. soon. No, and all the Creature Feature fans are going to want to come see you. Yes. Right. And so we will welcome them. Let's put that up one more time. It's ranchoobiwan.org. And all the info is there, right? Absolutely. And I know you, you run a very nicely well-written blog. And we have a virtual museum online, and yes. a virtual museum, so you can take so a tour. You, there's a lot of video that you can right. see There's online. There's a fantastic video of the, the, the Guinness Book of World Records one. Yes. That is absolutely fantastic. Wonderful tour. This is a very funny man. He, no, he's, he's quite the joker, you know, because he does not take all the things he has in his facility seriously, and he makes jokes about them on the video just for you. I was, I was laughing out loud. Indeed. I was lolling we've got a, at your video. We've got a lot of fan-made objects, and they're done with a lot of Those humor. Those were some of mine. my favorites. Yeah, mine too. No, no, no. That was incredible. The, the bicycle. That was incredible. He's got a bicycle. It looks like Pee Wee Herman's bicycle, but it's got a Darth Vader head. and uh, The Empire Strikes Bike. That's a perfect name. See? Humor. Humor. All right, Steve, you're amazing. Thank you so much for letting us in your facility. My pleasure. And coming up to our facility and uh, hopefully we'll have you on again soon when you've got something new to tell us about sounds good all right as far as you guys go thank you so much for staying up late and watching us you know they could have been watching reruns of get smart and instead they decided to watch <laughs> our show so that 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 makes me want to say i love you and see you next week and we'll have another guest another movie don't know who don't know what but it will be fun see you then so steve you know i'm thinking you rent this place out for parties. I'm thinking of throwing a Star Trek party. I don't think the Force would be with you. <laughs> <laughs>